Here's how you can do this typography animation directly from CapCut. First step is to bring in your video background. If you just want it to be a black screen, leave it as is, but I've just brought in this old noise background. Remember, if you want access to premium backgrounds like you're seeing right now, go check out my site where I sell some backgrounds for you guys to use. It just speeds up the process and you get access to cool backgrounds. Once you have your background, I'm actually gonna change my ratio to be square like this. I kinda like the way that looks. It feels more premium and allows us to stack our text. Now guys, it's as simple as going to your text icon here, your text button, clicking the plus icon on a default text layer. I'm just gonna drag that. I can see that my timeline is a minute long, so I'm just gonna go ahead and shorten it to about five seconds. There we go, and we can zoom in just like that. Once I have my first default text layer onto the timeline, over here in the font tab under text, I can go ahead and choose a font that I really like. In CapCut, if you toggle presets up, it'll remove the CapCut preset fonts and you can find the fonts that you've installed on your computer. So I'm gonna look for one and install one that has a tall kind of text because I like the way that looks. And I think if we find Oswald, I think Oswald Medium looks really good. Let's see how that looks, fantastic. Now what I'm gonna do is make this our first word. And my first word is gonna be Fost. That's the first word in our sequence. Now all I need to do is select my text layer, hold down option on Mac or right click and say copy. And I can just go ahead and paste that a couple more times, however many words are in your sequence. For this, it's gonna be six times because as you can remember, I have six words within the animation. So I can just paste it until there's six layers on top of each other, perfect. Now your next step is to add all your other words and frame them in a way that you like. Let me show you how I do it. I know my next word is paste, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. I know my third word is high, so I'm gonna put that over there. And I know my last word is energy. So on my energy tab, I'm gonna go ahead and place that there. Now for this to look really professional, you wanna try and make sure that all these line up directly on each other. So I can see that high is a little bit too far out. And there we go. For my fifth word, I'm gonna add graphic here and turn it to the side. And I know that I want it to line up perfectly with the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in some more and I can just drag that so that it meets the top. That's looking a little too big. Drag that right there. Just trying to make the C and the E and the G and the F line up there. So it needs to be dragged up a little bit. Great, I think that looks cool. And for our sixth word, I know that I want this to be kinetic, but I wanna change the font of this. I think that has a really nice effect if I change the font. So we're gonna be using a different one. Ooh, and I really like how feeling passionate looks and I can just add it above like that, decrease its size a bit. And I kind of like how that looks when it's turned to the side like that. So this is really you playing around. The next step and part of playing around is finding the color of our text. So I obviously have done this and I know what color I like, but on graphic, I'm gonna go to color. Let's make it more yellow and we can add I think that's a bit too yellow. That looks really nice. And I'm just gonna copy this hex code because I know energy, I want to look the same. So under my color tab, I can go ahead to my hex, paste that and click enter. Oof, that's starting to look really nice. And on high, let's make that a little more gray. So it stands out. And there you can see our graphics starting to take place. Now don't worry too much that we're not directly and perfectly centered. We're gonna be able to tweak that in a bit. The biggest part right now is just making sure that you really like the way your graphic looks. Uh, and I think that that block looks really, really nice. The next step is to animate our words. This effect just wouldn't be motion graphics, wouldn't be animation if we didn't have some animation. So what I'm gonna do first is my first word, Fost, I want it to come in not directly as our video starts. I want it to be two frames after our video starts. Then what I'm gonna do is make my timeline directly when FOSS starts and using my arrow keys, I'm gonna to toggle two frames ahead. And what I can do is highlight pace and click Q. Now go two frames ahead again, go to high and click Q. Basically what I'm doing is removing the start so that we have this kind of segmented or stuttered start. I think that's gonna to add to our effect a bit. For graphic, I'm gonna have it come in at the same time as energy. Um, but I'm actually just gonna put it there so that the animation comes in at the same time as the energy animation. And for kinetic, I think because it's the first word, we can actually have it come in directly when FOSS comes in. I think that'll create quite a, quite a cool effect. Now, this is where CapCut really stands out in your motion graphics department. For other programs, you may need to manually keyframe or animate the specific and individual words. For CapCut, we don't have to do this. If you stay highlighted on your word, and for that first word, I'm gonna use FOST, 
we can go to animation and there are so many animations that we actually are able to use and that look really, really cool. It doesn't end there yet and I'll show you the next step to take it to the next notch, but let's find some animations that look really nice that we can use. So for animation, I kind of want my words to come in from different sides of the screen like you saw in the reference. So for fast, I'm gonna go to animation and I'm gonna select slide right. I think that looks really, really cool. For pace, I want it to be doing the opposite thing, so I'm gonna select slide left. You can see it's starting to take shape there. Now also in CapCut, it's really easy to impact the duration, so I'm actually gonna make these slightly faster at 0.3 seconds. I forgot to do that on FOSS, let's make that. It's just gonna help us animate a bit faster. For high, because we have FOSS coming in from the left and pace from the right, I want this one to come in from the bottom. So if I go and select showing up, you can see that we're now sliding in. For energy, I'm gonna select it as wipe right. And don't worry that high and energy are crossing. I'll show you how to mitigate that now. For graphic, I want this to almost be like a graphic, a graphic animation. So let's find one and we can use, ooh, chroma type looks really cool. Look at how that looks. Very, very nice. Again, let's just make sure our duration is all the same here. It doesn't have to be exactly what I use, but I'm just gonna use these values because I want the animation to be slightly faster. And then for kinetic, our last word, I think I'm just gonna use something called bounce. Oof, that looks really nice, really nice. And we can leave the duration longer on that one because it kind of acts as the, the overarching for all the rest. Look at how nice that looks, guys. We're not done there yet. There is a secret effect. You can see that all of the words kind of mix over each other and we don't want that to happen, right? So on FOSS, on our first layer, I'm gonna go ahead and select it and say Alt-G. Alternatively, you can right click and say create compound clip and just use the shortcut that's there. On our compound clip, we've essentially created a new video layer. Go to video, go to mask, and let's select the rectangle mask. Now, because we know that the word we're masking is FOSS, I'm just gonna go ahead and put my rectangle over there. And I'm just gonna make sure that the rectangle almost covers the word perfectly, just like that. It's okay if there's some spaces on the top and the bottom, we just want it to be almost perfect. And I'll show you the effect that that, word, that, that effect has. So now when FOSS comes in, you can see that instead of overlapping on graphic, it just shows up from the point where that mask is. So if we do the same to pace, you can see that pace slides in all the way from the left. Fortunately, there's nothing that it's overlapping, but let's apply the same thing, create a compound clip, go to rectangle, and let's make sure that it's almost perfectly on there. Now when pace comes in, you can see that pace comes in and only starts showing up from that point over there. I'm gonna apply the same thinking for the rest of them. From there, you have the base of your effect. Now there are some really cool extra things that you can do to take your animation to the next level. I'm gonna highlight all of my text layers, just by going on my timeline and dragging over them. And let's create a new compound clip with all of those effects. You can see that our animation is still exactly the same. So once they're all compounded, remember I said you didn't need to necessarily worry about how it was placed. What you can do is just subtly increase the size of that. And because all of our elements are together, I can reposition that directly into the center just like that. I think I really like how that looks. Now in terms of sizing, because this is a compound clip, don't increase your size to two, 300%. You're gonna actually get a bit of quality loss on that text, so it's not gonna be as sharp as it was, but you can see we can zoom it in just a little bit and it's still perfectly sharp. Once you have that placed on your timeline, let's go to effects and let's search for something called play. On play pendulum, drag that over your whole timeline and drag it to the end of the timeline. And over here, I'm gonna decrease my twist. You can see twist kind of makes our text look weird. If you like that effect, leave it on. Decrease my strength. I'm gonna leave sharpening on about five, and then for speed, I'm gonna bring that down to 12. Now you can see that all of our text kind of moves together, and I'm actually gonna decrease my speed and my strength a little bit. I don't like how strong that effect was. I really like how that looks. It kind of creates all of our elements moving together. From there, I'm gonna go back to my compound clip, go to video, create my mask, and let's create a mirror mask. Drag your mirror mask vertically like that at 270 or 90 degrees, and I can drag that in a bit and make sure that it covers perfectly just like that. We can cut off some of graphic and some of the Y of energy. And then what I'm gonna do is just add a bit of a feather. So that creates quite a cool effect on the edges of our graphic. It adds almost a gradient to graphic and the end of energy. Very, very nice. 
And then the last thing I'm gonna do, because there's motion as our words come in, I don't like how sharp that animation is. So CapCut is fantastic in this way, but you can go to video, scroll down on your video in basic, and we can add some motion blur. Now I'm gonna decrease this grade to about 10 and only select it for Ford. And you'll see that this has a really, really cool effect. And I realized that the value of 10 on motion blur was a bit too low, but if I play that motion blur now at 49, you can see that wherever there's some movement in the word, or in the animation, there's some motion blur applied to our letters. And then if you want that outro effect, go into your compound clip and you can stagger these effects as well. So because I want it to stagger top down, I'm gonna have our first word go out with kinetic. I'm gonna move some frames ahead and have all these words go out at the same time. So now when I play that, you'll see what this looks like. And because our motion blur is applied, the motion of it moving away creates quite a cool effect. 